I've got black. Okay. <clears throat> Umpa? Yes, my love? What piece are you? What do you mean? Well, you always say chess is like life, so what piece are you? I don't know. What do you think? I think you're the queen. <laughs> really? And why is that? Because the queen sits in the back and watches over all the other pieces. And if someone's in trouble, she moves where she needs to and helps them. Is that how you see me? Well, you are a sweetheart. Thank you. Remember, however, in chess, like in real life, you can't depend on just one piece. You have to be able to see the whole board and know how to use each piece. Umpa? Go ahead, but stay in sight. Care for a game, Colonel? Have you gotten any better since the last time we played? Well, that was nine years ago. I could have taken classes, gone to tournaments. I could be a grandmaster for all you know. Are you? No, but you never know, I could be. Do you mind if I finish up this game first? You playing by yourself? Actually, I'm not playing at all. This is a game that was played in 1925 at a Grand Masters tournament. You memorized it? Nah, I saw a move chart on a plane trip from Boston to Washington. When did you work in Boston? I didn't. You saw this game when you were in school, some 35 years ago. Yes. And how do you know that you're remembering it correctly? Right, what was I thinking? Well, I'm glad to see that you were able to retire as you planned. Spending more time with your family, your granddaughter's getting big. How old is she now, 12? 13. And she lets you be seen with her? <laughs> Anytime I get close to my 13-year-old and her friends, she just about explodes. <laughs> Dad, trying to ruin my life? Well, it's a little easier as a grandparent. Is that right? You didn't have to bribe her with anything? Well, I did. Tell her I would take her to get some fruit after the game. Fruit? Yeah, she wants some blackberries. Blackberries? Really? Did she say some or a? Sorry? Did she say she wanted some blackberries or a blackberry? A blackberry. Okay, well, <laughs> one is a fruit and the other one is a $300 cell phone. Okay, yeah, well, I can see that. You're laughing. Colonel, I've seen you run missions where you've made fools of some of the smartest people in the world. Manipulated senators and congressmen. But to see you get played by a 13-year-old girl is hilarious. <laughs> well, in my defense, my granddaughter is smarter than most senators and congressmen and a few presidents, come to think of it. You know, as fun as this is, I've taken three different trains and two planes in the last 24 hours to make sure that we were alone for this talk. What am I doing here, Colonel? You know, I was never a Colonel when I was with the company. I know. 
It made it easier to take your orders, though. You mean it was easier thinking you didn't work for the CIA, don't you? That was a long time ago. No regrets, is that it? Why would I have regrets? I did my job following orders. That you did, and there was never anyone better. What are you doing? You're writing a book? No, I'm not writing a book, really. Just the opposite. We have a little problem. What the hell are you talking about? All of my jobs are to the numbers. There's no possibility of blowback I'm on sorry. any of my I'm operations. I'm sorry I misspoke. I should have said, I have a problem. Do you remember 15 years ago you asked me for a favor? Yeah? I need a favor. A favor? What? You need me to help you move? No, I was thinking more along the lines of doing what the government trains you to do. That's a joke, right? Look at me. I haven't fired a gun or held a knife in over 15 years. My passport isn't even valid anymore. Don't worry, you don't have to leave the States. I can't operate in the U.S. Wait a minute, what am I thinking? <laughs> I am a civilian now. I sell body armor to police forces and crazy hunters who think deer are going to start using M16s any day now. I need you to come out of retirement for just one more job. Come on. There's got to be someone else that is active that can take care of this for you. You are the only one that I can trust. You always did have trust issues. This is nuts. You know, you've been free and clear for 15 years. This is not nuts. I need this. Okay. You know, it's not like I was a pitcher and my shoulder went out. I never liked the work. Okay. What the hell is this? Keep reading. A doctor. What the hell is this guy? He's a specialist in Alzheimer's. Just one? Because, you know, you got to have him. He was the fourth. How far along is it? Far enough along for me to start making plans. And this is your great plan to just give up? This is not me just giving up. I don't want you to show up next Thursday and put a bullet in my head. I want to spend quality time with my family. I want to see my grandkids grow up, start school. But most of all, I want them to remember a grandpa who was healthy and who loved them, not some scary guy drooling all over himself. Not to mention, like you said, there is all kinds of information locked away in my head that I can't allow to get out. Panama. You remember Panama, right? I remember. So what happens when I no longer have the capacity
capacity to keep that information locked away and I start talking about Panama to someone. And how long after that you think it's gonna take for some screwball to put two and two together and start asking questions about Senator Dipshit? You know, those are very good questions. But I'll bet your family will be the first to put up the strongest fight against them. Not to mention that you're denying them the right to take care of you, like you did for them when they were young. When they were young, all we did was take care of them just to get them started. We always knew that one day they would get older and be able to take care of themselves. This is not a temporary disease, it's a permanent one. The closest thing out there right now is a drug that may slow down the progression and it's, what, 10 years away from human trials? When I was 24, my father passed away. One night he had dinner with my mom, had a nice glass of wine, went to bed, and he never woke up. And the thing that got me the most was that I never got the chance to say goodbye. You have no idea. No idea what it's like to watch someone die right before your eyes a little at a time. My father was a very strong man. He lived most of his life as a, a mason. And then he got sick. And he went from being this big, tough guy who tossed cinder blocks like they were toys to a man with a frame so small that I had to carry him just to go to the bathroom. I could see how tough that was for him. To have his son, the child he carried home from the hospital, carrying him to the bathroom. And at those times when I looked in his eyes, his eyes weren't filled with love or appreciation. They were filled with shame and pain. I'm telling you, the most difficult thing in the world to do is to get to the point where you can say goodbye. Because when you get to the point where you can say goodbye, that means you have given up all hope. And there's nothing left to do but say goodbye. Do you see what you're asking me to do? You're asking me to be your judge, jury, and executioner. You should know better than anyone. People with this condition have good days and bad. One day you wake up, you don't know where you are or who the people are around you. Then the very next day, you can be as lucid as the old days. You could go back to work and no one would even know. So you tell me, how do I make that call? How do I decide there are no more good days left? I know what people are like with this condition. And in our world, you don't have bad days. Because bad days in our world, people die. But how can you do that? How can you make that girl's mother look her in the eye and say, Grandpa isn't coming home anymore? I would rather she cry for just a few days and remember me like this. then run away from me when I have no dignity. <sighs> so you'll do it? As far as deciding when, I've been taking these tests which determine brain function, memory, logic, awareness. 
the results of those tests are going to be sent to an email. When the numbers drop below a certain point that I have listed, it'll be time. I'm thinking of something peaceful where no one else can get hurt. I mean, not like a car crash. I know my job. One question. Why me? I know a lot of people. But they're just pictures with bad shoulders. But you... You just don't like the work. Colonel, it's been an honor. Marianne, it's time to go home. Your mom's waiting. Marianne, oh God. I'm fine. I'm right here. You haven't lost me. I was somewhere else for a second. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had about enough fresh air for the day. Let's go home. Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> so how are you liking Northwestern? It's not easy, that's for sure. Nothing worth doing ever is, you know that. I know, I just... I look at others around me and I feel like I'm so far behind and I just get so frustrated with the whole thing. Remember what I told you. Don't look to others for who or what you're doing. You're not a test taker, you're a... A scholar? Right. I know, I'm bad. Look, you're going to graduate. And when you do, when you walk off that stage, you know what you're gonna have that none of your classmates do? You're gonna have an education. They're gonna have a piece of paper that says they can pass a test. But you're gonna have an education that'll take you through life. It doesn't really seem like that much of a difference. Excuse me. Trust me, in the long run it'll make a world of difference. I hope so. If I told you how proud of you I am. Thanks, Santa. Yes, this is an emergency. An older man has just collapsed in the park near the Wild Canyon entrance. Send an ambulance as soon as possible. My name, I'm sorry you're starting to break up. <laughs>